Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 608. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook 608 to 612. Hey, this trick here, we have an amazing array formula to solve uh, an amazing problem. Here is a schedule. We have student names, and we have periods. So there's variables across the column headers and variables across the row headers. At any intersection, student 4, period 2, we have a class. Student 4, however, has a free period in period 3. Now the goal is to do two things. We're going to do one of them in 608 and one of them in 609. Down here at the bottom, we need to list for period 1 all of the students' names that have free periods. This is so the teachers can go and talk to them and say, hey, look, maybe you should go to study hall or uh, you can do this homework during this period. So that's problem number one. And it needs to be dynamic. That's why I have to do a big, nasty array formula. You know, you could just filter, right? But forget it. This is for Monday. There's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and you want to use this template all the time. And you want people to use it that have no idea how to use filter. So that's why we want an array formula. The second part is going to be for the students. Here's their name. And they come over here and they say, ah, I have all of these free periods, right? So student number one has five free periods. Uh, the first period, 905, uh, lunch, uh, period five, etc. cetera. Uh, this student has four, all of that. And this also needs to be an array formula and uh, totally automatic. When, as soon as you put the, the classes and the student's name in, boom, everything's filled out. Now, I made a smaller version of this. All the formulas are in this if you want to take a look. Here's our uh, periods. We have a period name and a time. Well, here's our names, and here's some classes. So Sue has a class at 8 a.m. and 12, that way. Also, for 8 a.m., Sue has a class, Joe has a class, Chin has a class. So our first goal is list students with free periods. So for example, if we look at the answer over here, this is a free period in period one, so Sue's name is listed. This is a free period Joe, so Joe's name is listed. Free period Lung. All right, let's see how to do this. The first thing is we um, are going to have, as we see over here, the formula's got to be copied all the way down, right? If we were to delete this right here, then that person's name has to show up, Control-Z. We need a, a dynamic template, right? So we're going to have to first count the number of free periods. Well, that's easy, equals count if. Remember, we're counting blanks. The range, that's the range with the criteria. Notice our criteria is blank, one, two, three comma, and then the criteria is double quotes, double quotes. That says uh, count the blanks. Control Enter, and then copy it over. Check it over here. Relative cell references work just fine. Now this is going to be the on-off switch, because as we copy the formula down, when it gets past row 3, all of the remaining rows need to be blank. All right, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm actually drag this over here. OK, so here we go. Equals if. And remember, we need our on off switch. And since that's 3, somehow this formula, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. As soon as we get bigger than 3, we need it to turn off. So we're going to use the rows function. The rows functions will increment a number 1, 2, 3, 4 as you copy the formula down. Now we're in cell B14, so I do B dollar sign, because that one needs to be locked, 14, colon, and then B14. Notice, if we say rows, it's 14 to 14 right now, but since that's locked and that one's not, when we get down to the next row, this will be 14, this will be 15, that'll give us 2. When rows is greater than this one, and this one also needs to be locked going down, dollar sign in front of the number, the row reference, this way, but when we copy the formula over, the dance and dance needs to move to the number 2. OK, so what do we want? That's the true-false test. If it's true, which means we're past number 3, we want double quote, double quote for blank. Please show a blank. Otherwise, the value of false, and here's where we get our big array. We're going to use index. 
index is a lookup function. It needs an array and a row number. Now, if we just could give it the array, that would be easy. Um, and it, this is, we're returning the actual student name. So I scroll up here, grab this, and that needs to be locked in all directions. Every single cell in our um, area here needs to look there. Comma. Now here's the tricky part. Here's the array. Now I've done many formulas like this, um, but this this is a hard array formula, and uh, never hurts to practice a lot and see lots of different examples. The problem is row number, right? We actually need one, two, three, four, five. There's six total possible row numbers for all these names. Somehow we need to get blank. Oh, that's one, two. So that'll give us for this purple range right here. Remember that's the array. That's the uh, the range of values that has the uh, values we want to return to the cell. So we need a 2 here, three, a 4 here, and a f uh, 6. right? But there's three of them. How in the world are we going to get three of them as we copy down and not get blanks in between? Well, we're going to use the small. Small is great because you can give it, in essence, all the row numbers. right? And as we copy down, it'll pick just the one we want. But what's the criteria? We actually need uh, row numbers, so we'll use like the row function. But we need to get some criteria. And remember, the criteria is blank. So I'm going to say inside of the array for small, if any of these ones up here, and guess what? This is locked going down. But when we move the formula over, those dancing ants needs to move over here. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, locked row, not the column. If any of those are equal to blank. Well, now we get true, 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 right? Well, what do we want? We want the row numbers. Oh, we want to, in essence, get a false, false, false there. So we're not getting row 1, 3, or 5. So logical test that, comma, value if true, the row. Now I'm actually going to just copy this, because I'm going to use it uh, a couple times. Now the problem with row right here is it will give us 3, 4, 5, and that's not what we want, so no problem. We want a robust formula, so we're not going to like go row 1 to 6 or anything like that, because if we insert columns, it would mess it up. We want robust. So we're this row, B3 to B8, is looking exactly inside the table. So even if we cut and paste this table somewhere, that will always remain and give us the right number. But we don't want 3 to 8, right? No problem. We go minus row. I'm going to control V and backspace. R minus row 3, what does that do? Well, right now we got 3 minus 3. That's 0. That's not going to work. But if we add 1 back in, boom, now we got our array. In fact, you can highlight this and hit the F9 key and see we got our 1 through 6. And the reason why we always do this instead of other alternative, again, it's robust. All of the cell reference here are within the table here. The only time that this is ever going to be deleted is if we delete the whole template. right? And then that means this formula is going to be deleted too. All right, so we got it. Those are all the row numbers. This if blank will give us trues and falses. And by the way, we can just go F9, true, 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 control Z. Remember here it was F9. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. So it's going to be true, true for 4 and 6. Totally awesome. Control Z. Now, we don't need these falses at all. They don't have to be in the, I mean, we don't have to put anything for false, so we just close off the if. Now we're left with the small. Now remember, we have multiple values. And if you highlight this whole if, uh, I think right here, boop, and hit F9, 2, 4, 6. So we have an array with the correct row numbers. But how are we going to get a 2 here, a 4 here, a 6 here? Well, no problem. Control Z. That's why it's inside of the small. Now, we need the first one, the second one, the third one. We use our number incrementer. So I'm going to put this right here. That's the K. Remember, 1, 2, 3 as it copies down. Close parentheses right there. You've got to close parentheses. Boom. The index, well, we just put in our row number. That's all we need, close parentheses. We have already have both the true value of true and value of false, so we close off that. And finally, we put our array formula in, hold Control Shift, and Enter. Double click and copy it down, Boop. or copy it all the way down, and then copy it over. Sure enough, that looks like it's working like a charm. We better test it. I'm going to come over here. Oh, we forgot Chin. Chin is in 
Business 216, that's my class where I teach beginning Excel. All of a sudden, Chin's name disappears. Now, um, to Business 214, my advanced Excel class, um, Lung actually signed up for this, so we're going to type Business 214. Now, you could have data validation here, and you probably should, and, and uh, Lung's name will go away here, right? Boop. Now, if both of these people drop the class, oh, that would be so sad. Not from uh, 214, not from advanced Excel. That's too much fun. But if we drop uh, Joe, I mean, J Joe drops accounting 121, the name shows up here. All right, in our next video, we will do uh, the next part of this, which is, remember, this was for the teachers to look. Here's the students with the free names. Um, we need to go to talk to them. But in the next video, 609, we'll do for the students, we'll list their actual periods. And this formula will be similar, but orientated differently. And there's a totally cool twist in this one. So come on back for 609. All right, see you next trick.